Okay, here's the kind of console stereo that you do not want to waste your time with. This is a Lloyd's AM FM radio with an 8 track tape player and BSR record changer. The cabinet is made out of the cheapest particle board that you could imagine. In fact, when I was moving the thing, it left a trail of sawdust behind and parts started falling off of the cabinet, as you can see here. I mean, I mean, look at this, how it's just crumbling apart down here. So there's just really no point in trying to save this. Hmm. See what we've got here. Oh, we've got some records and some eight tracks that someone left. Let's see what's in here. Track tape, uh, Jimmy Swaggart, uh, J.D. Whitfield, and the Singing News Singers, the Ambassadors, and a picture of someone, the original hang tag that went on the stereo, a 45 RPM record that's gospel evidently here's the instruction manual that came with the stereo and some more pictures looks like a bunch of gospel records here I was hoping at least I'd find some classic rock albums in this stereo to make it at least somewhat worth my while bringing this thing home, but it doesn't look like that's the case. All gospel records. Ah, Jimmy Swaggart. <laughs> well, I'm sure if you like that kind of music, those are some good records, but it's really not my kind of music, so I'll be donating them to someone just for the heck of it. Let's fire this thing up and see what it does, shall we? Okay, here we go. Okay, the radio seems to work. It's got ex extremely scratchy pots, and I'm hearing some hum coming out of one channel, so probably means we have some bad electrolytic capacitors. Is something that uh, you guys have tried for? Wait till you. Okay, let's try the tape. See what happens there. And the tape appears to be dead, most likely a broken belt. And the record changer, there's no need in even t testing it because it's frozen solid as a rock. So yeah, I would say about all this piece of junk's good for is parts. Okay, here's the underside of this thing. You can really see the cabinet damage. And notice the pieces and the sawdust that have already fallen off of this thing. 
Here are the electronics. Very cheap chassis. Very cheap speakers. Just a looks like about a six inch speaker wired in series with a little three or four inch speaker. There's the BSR record changer. Now what's going to happen here is I'm going to rob the speakers out of this because I can use them in my tube radio repair and I'll rob the BSR record changer. I can lubricate that and get it working again. I'm always needing a record changer for something. And this cheap crappy cabinet is going to meet the fate of the sledgehammer. Now, if you're interested in buying a console stereo, stick with something from the 1960s or before. Most of those had real wooden cabinets that would stand the test of time, and even the particle board ones were usually of somewhat decent quality. The speaker systems in the older models were better. Some of them had 12 to 15 inch woofers and horn tweeters and the electronics in the older ones were much more substantial and better quality as was the record changer so don't waste your money on any of this 70's crap like this it just amazes me the number of these consoles that I see on Craigslist from this era and the sellers think they're sitting on a gold mine when in fact they'd be doing good to get somebody to come haul the thing off for free. But names like Lloyd, Sound Design, Electrophonic, Juliet, stuff sold under the Western Auto, True Tone brand name, stuff from Sears, and the list could go on and on for other off brands, but any of those from the 70's you want to probably stay away from. Now Zenith, Magnavox, and RCA still continue to build consoles into the 70's and possibly into the early 80's and even though the the quality of, of those brands was not the same as what they were in the 50's and 60's I think they were still a little bit better than this cheap crap. So if you want an old console, stick with the older stuff. Leave this cheap, crappy particle board and plastic crap alone. It's, it's a waste of time. Okay, there's my video on the crappy mid-70s Lloyd's console stereo that's crumbling to pieces. Thanks for watching and more to come later. Okay, here's a better look at the chassis in this thing with the back cover removed. You can see it's just your typical imported 70's junk stereo chassis. Okay, here are the speakers out of this thing. Larger speakers are 8 ohms rated at 3 watts. And these smaller speakers are 45 ohms impedance at 1 watt. And here's the BSR record changer in the 45 RPM adapter. Changer cosmetically actually looks pretty good. But I guess this stereo was okay for playing Jimmy Swaggart records on, but not much good for anything else. So I'm done this time. Thanks for watching, and I'll try to have something better up next time. Okay, it's real easy to break the lid off of one of these. You just lift up on it, give it the slightest push, and the particle board just crumbles and it falls off. A five-year-old could do it. Death to a cheap Lloyd's console stereo. Didn't even need a sledgehammer. My foot worked just fine. Goodbye.